Welcome to this step-by-step uh, -step video on some plein air painting um, down at the nice little beach called Queenscliff in Victoria, um, down on the Ballerine Peninsula. And I went out there recently with a friend to do some plein air painting in the morning, and I uh, thought I'd put together a little step-by-step -step video of uh, how this painting that you can see on the screen there, how that unfolded. Now, it was a very challenging morning. Uh, from a wind perspective, um, it was blowing a gale basically, and I lost my palette a couple of times and almost lost the uh, the whole easel and everything, and constantly changing light conditions and the cloud was you know blowing by, by at a great rate of knots. So had to work quite quickly and uh, just try and get something down as quickly as we could um, because it just was so changeable. Here's a photo of the scene that we we're painting. This is a Queenscliff black lighthouse, quite famous. Um, and it's the heads here into the bay in, in Victoria. And um, you can see that it was quite a cloudy overcast morning, but then it went bright sunshine at times and uh, it was very variable, very variable conditions. This is my setup, it's just a French easel here. Um, I'm painting on a, uh, I think I painted on a 10 by 12 inch uh, board which I've just applied one coat of gesso very thinly to um, so that when I do my underpainting that it will soak in a little bit into the board. Um, so I'm just on a French easel and my uh, palette there as you can see. You can see I've got my full drink bottle, water bottle there. I had to put that on the uh, palette to stop the palette flying away. Um, the colours I was using, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and two strips of uh, titanium white and I'm using just basically a turpentine low out of terps um, as a thinner I don't use any other mediums at all and just a couple of uh, medium size flat brushes for nearly all of the work um, that I, I do in the painting so I use a lot of bigger brushes for the whole painting what you can see here is I've mixed up ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson into a um, transparent dark um, which I then use for my drawing and I use it as the basis to start blocking in my darks as well. So you can see here I've just roughed in a drawing. Just trying to position the big shapes is really all I'm doing at this stage. Um, I was trying to map out some of the cloud shapes but uh, they were blown by so fast that that proved a little bit futile. So what I effectively had to do with the clouds was just to um, you know, try and summarize what was happening in the sky, um, create a snapshot if you like. Um, so my initial attempt to draw out the shapes uh, proved a little bit futile, so I uh, ended up just summarizing the clouds. Uh, from there, what I did was uh, mix up some darks to get in my dark areas. Now if you look at the photo up here, um, the headland there, uh, and the you know, the towers and so on are the darkest objects, and the next darkest would be this foreground grass mass. So because I want to create a bit of distance um, I made the distant headland dark a little bluer um, in here and the foreground dark um, had a little bit more burnt sienna in the mix so it was a little bit you know pushing it more towards black. Didn't want to get a complete black obviously and that's just a really thin mix. Um, I mixed up a really sloppy mix using lots of thinner and put that down just to map in the darks uh, in the painting and then it gave that time to dry while I worked on other areas of the painting. So went to the sky you can see I mixed up a grey. The grey is um, almost you know this colour here, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, a little touch of alizarin crimson and then just applying white to tone it down a bit um, and then the blue is ultramarine blue and titanium white and as I get down lower in the sky I just lighten it off with more titanium white um, so I, you know, I was just really playing around at this stage just feeling for where to put the cloud shapes and so on put in more of the greys as it was greying over as I was doing it and tried to warm it up a little bit along the horizon there and then started just a bit of a blending process. You can see the paint here at this stage very thin so I had a reasonable amount of thinner in the uh, sky in that first um, layer there. I've also gone and blocked in the sand area. Now I've done that quite warm and, and probably way too dark for what it should be um, so I came back and worked over that later um, but I just wanted to get that locked in just to uh, give it some, you know, the sky something to contrast off there. Start to block in the water area and um, really again I'm just using a few basic colours here. Um, ultramarine blue, I started using some cadmium yellow to get the, um, the lighter greens and the yellow ochre and titanium white. Um, and I just tried to get some variations in those tones as the waves 
um, started to you know break towards the shore they stood up and they went darker in um, color on the face so that's what you see there and then I started to uh, when the Sun came out um, briefly I started to try and get in some of the greens and um, it's just if you can see the photo in the background there it's a massive foliage and greens and there's a bit of light on the headland there and I've also blocked in um, an underpainting color for that headland area right in the front there um, so yeah just trying to get a feel of the different greens get some variety into there there's a, a more of a close-up and I'll put a little bit of light some of the lights on the uh, rocky headland there the rocky part of the headland put in some of the buildings just an indication basically just sort of a few marks probably way too uh, bright I need to tone all three of them down which I didn't do while I was there but back in the studio I will um, one good thing is to always take out a friend with your painting um, this is Moira who I went out with and painted and you can see she's painting the same subject and uh, just makes makes it more fun and gives you someone to talk to and so on um, so yeah think about that now the other thing I was gonna the reason why I wanted to show you this photo was uh, about 18 months ago I painted this same scene from the same location and I deliberately went back there just to compare um, my painting now compared to 18 months ago just to see you know what level of improvement I've had and um, I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised to see that I'd made quite a big improvement so um, that's something I definitely recommend is that you go back and repaint the same subject on location because the biggest difference was my ability to be able to see the tones and the colors had improved greatly um, the first time around I painted it I, I was way off so um, I highly recommend that now with the clouds I started to get in some uh, more lighter tones here and warming up some of those colors because some there was some sun appearing from the right hand side hitting the tops of those clouds and a little bit on the face of the uh, the headland there so I was just putting in some warmer colors into there and I blended them in a little bit you can see there in this photo you can see how on this top side here there's um, that warmth there's a bit of yellowy sort of feel on the top of those clouds and that's what I was trying to emulate there as you can see in my photo of my painting there um, but again that blew past in like literally under a minute those clouds were gone so I had to really just um, you know make a summation of what I'd seen there um, and this is pretty much the finished painting put in some of the the rolling foam on the waves and you know closer into shore um, you can see there with the water breaking up on the shore there um, there have been a few people that have walked past and just to give it a sense of perspective and scale um, put some people in loosely put in the pier and a couple of the pillars out in the water I, I didn't do anything at all with the, um, the lighthouse as you can see I just made a mark because it was blowing so much that I couldn't hold my hand still really so any fine detail work just wasn't going to happen um, so I will take this let it dry for a few days and um, once it's dry, I'll start to maybe just really tighten up the detail in the headland and the lighthouse, the water tower. There's an old fort there. Um, there's a few other buildings over on the right-hand side and a couple of pine trees. So I'll tighten up all those details in the studio um, after it's had a chance to, you know, to dry off a little bit. But uh, that gives you an indication of the sort of process and the thinking that goes behind creating painting. You can see here also I've greatly lightened the sand. Now if you compare the sand in my painting to the sand in the um, the scene here, it's a much closer match now than what it was before. Now having said that, the sun in this photo uh, was behind a cloud. Um, so when I put this in, I waited until the sun was out and a bit brighter. So I'm a little bit lighter than what you see in the photo, but that's because when I applied that lighter tone, there was more sunlight on the actual sand here but again you, you know one of the joys of plein air painting it can change rapidly but it's also one of the frustrations but you know once you um it gets in your blood plein air painting it's hard to stop so uh anyway i hope that gives you um some ideas on how to approach plein air painting and uh, you, you know if you love painting and you love getting outdoors then go and have a go at plein air painting it really is one of the great joys um, for artists I believe um, capture a moment in time on location there is nothing better you know worst day at work um, sorry your worst day plein air painting would be better than your best day at work any day of the week <laughs> if you ask me um, there's finished painting a little bit more closer detail and at that point I'd given up just got way too windy and uh, about an hour and a half into it there 
thought it's time to uh, call it a day. Now, if you want to learn more about painting, uh, or if you're just getting started painting, we've got a free painting course for you. Uh, if you go to www.freepaintingvideos.com and drop your email address in there, we'll send you a, um, a free uh, Get Started Painting video course um, over five days. And it'll teach you the basics, how to get started painting. There's a couple of painting projects for you to do. And um, you'll get you on your way to learning how to paint. So um, I'd encourage you to do that if, you, if you're just starting out or you want to learn more techniques and so on. And um, if you're you know, interested in plein air painting, get out there and have a go. I hope this video is helpful and I'll chat with you later. Cheers.